whoever, whoever's richness is in their heart, they feel rich in their heart, they're rich hearted, then nothing that the dunya throws at them will faze them in any way, will harm them in any way. If they're rich in the heart, if they're rich hearted, then nothing in the dunya, nothing that the dunya throws at them will harm them in any way. And whose ever poverty is in their hearts, in his or her heart, that person will never be satisfied despite all the things that they get from the dunya. They will never be satisfied. That will never get, uh, make, give them enough. No matter how much they have from the dunya. And what really harms the soul is its avarice, is greed. That's what really harms the soul. <clears throat> so what the Prophet ﷺ was saying briefly is that <coughs> the way that most people in the world, 99.99999% evaluate or put things in perspective is by seeing the way that they measure richness and poorness is by the physical wealth or lack thereof. If you have a lot of physical wealth, then people consider you affluent. And if you don't have that physical wealth, money or assets or real estate or stocks, whatever, if you don't have that, then you're very poor. You're not affluent. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam redefines the paradigm, redefines it totally in the way that the believer looks at things and says that richness is richness in the heart, richness of the heart. And if that richness is there, then whatever happens in the dunya does not affect this person, does not influence or harm this person. The rich part of And if that poverty is in the heart, then that person, no matter what happens, they will never feel satisfied. No matter how much wealth they amass in the world, they could be billionaires. Last time I went to Saudi Arabia, uh, oh, about five, six years back, some of the brothers were telling me we have trillionaires here. Trillionaires. SubhanAllah. So, no matter how much you have, you'll never be satisfied. And what really harms the soul, as the Prophet said, is the greed of the soul. So, Rasul is basically telling us that there's another way to look at things. And that's the way we need to look at things if we are going to draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to free our hearts of the worthy ways of measuring things, the worthy standards. And measure them in the standards of this deen, as specified by the Qur'an and the Sunnah, like this hadith of the Prophet So what does it mean when we talk about the internal poverty versus the external poverty? Because Rasulullah is saying, that the real poverty is the poverty of the heart. The real poorness is the poorness of the heart. So what is this poverty? Because in the heart, it's just like internal. And outside, what most people pay attention to is that, is the external poverty. Okay? So what we as, as human beings need to understand is that as human beings, we're weak. We're weak people. You know, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an, وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفَ The human being has been created weak. So, 
Knowing that, we understand right away that our needs, we have needs. And our needs usually are met by external influences. When it comes to our physical being, you know, with, with, with uh, the environment that we live in, the temperature, the food that we get, the, uh, what we drink, and so on, it's all external influences that maintain the body. So we need those external needs. Well, similarly, we have internal needs, the spiritual needs, the needs of the heart, the needs of the soul. We, we have those needs. And that need, or those needs, are provided by the revelation, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by, by the fitrah. You know, to love Allah, to trust Allah, to depend on Allah, and so on. This is, this is the internal need that we badly we, we badly need in our lives. And as we begin to uh, think about these things, the different, different examples in our lives, you know, about all the external needs and all the internal needs, internal needs as far as the taqwa, the trust in Allah, the iman, and so on and so forth, we immediately need to understand that the internal needs that we have if we don't have them, then we're poor. And often, you know, the, when it comes to the, uh, uh, the, uh, the internal needs, it can never be satisfied without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The internal needs must have the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And hence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an tells us Only with the remembrance of Allah the hearts are brought to peace, the hearts are brought to rest. So that iman, that many, that, that you know, that, that uh, spiritual side of things is very elusive for most human beings on the planet. People are looking for this everywhere and they're, they're scouring the earth for this. And we'll talk about this a little bit later in more detail. But People are looking for it everywhere. But we must understand as Muslims that we cannot get that except through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and through what He has told us, through the revelation, through the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. And the second thing is that not only do we understand we cannot get it except anyone through Allah, and the second uh, the big issue is that anything else will perish. Only this will remain. So if we're looking for happiness and joy and contentment, like kind of permanent type thing, it will not come except through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we must understand that each of us is in desperate need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we don't realize that desperate need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we will be impoverished we'll have poverty in our hearts. We will be poor in our hearts. We'll be poor hearted, not rich hearted. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Fatir, Surah 35, Ayah 15, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhun nas, antumul fuqara ila Allah. O people, you are the ones who are poor. And you are the ones who are in need of Allah. You're in desperate need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, without Him, you can't do anything. And that's why one of the scholars, uh, you know, he said that um, if you found Allah, what have you lost? And if you've lost Allah, what have you found? More valuable than Allah, more dear than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, more precious than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, O oh people, you are the ones who are in desperate need. You are the ones who are poor and you're in desperate need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu huwa al-ghaniyyul hameed. And it is Allah who is self-sufficient, who does not need anyone. He is free of need. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the praiseworthy. So you are the ones who are in need and in need of Allah in particular, more specifically. But Allah is not in need of you or anyone or anything. So, brothers, in this way, you find that 
we have needs both on the external side and on the internal side. And the internal side is through trusting Allah, through loving Allah, to having the taqwa, to having the tawakkul, to having that iman and so on. These are all the internal needs. If we don't have them, we are considered poor hearted. As a matter of fact, these are the things that make us alive. Just like food and drink, and the right environment, the right temperature, and, and so on and so forth, make us alive out externally. Internally, these are the things that make us alive. And hence you find in Surah Al-Anfal, Surah 8, Ayah 24, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu stajeebu lillahi wa lil-rasul. Ida da'akum lima yuhiqo. That, O oh, you who believe, who have iman, you know, the, the, the internally, the heart is rich, right? Who have iman, Respond, answer to the call of Allah and to the Messenger. Respond to them, answer to their call. Come ready to act and, and practice and implement what they have asked you to do. Because that's what's going to give life to your heart. This is what's going to give life to your heart. Outside of that, it's not going to give you life. It's going to make you dead in your heart. If you don't have that iman, if you don't have the Qur'an, if you don't have the sunnah, if you don't have revelation, if you don't have the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the value for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you don't think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you don't uh, uh, think about Allah azza wa jalla in every sphere of your life, you're going to be impoverished. You won't appreciate Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, brothers, there are two types of poverty, two types of needy situations in our hearts. The first one is the one that you, this permanent, you cannot get rid of that. And that is the need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is permanent. You, you cannot avoid this. Most people try to gloss over it or try to ignore it, but they suffer dearly. As you see in all the mental problems that we have today. Uh, again, I'm not talking about the physical chemical imbalance, I'm just talking about the, the ones <coughs> that are not medically related. And even the medically related, you know, they find that when they turn to God, when they turn to Allah, that a lot of those problems, they dissipate, they fall by the wayside. But not all problems, I'm not minimizing the medical side of things. So. So there's that first type, and that is the permanent need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second one is the need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the sense of having Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your life, of trusting Him, of loving Him, of obeying Him, of fearing Him, of putting your hopes in Him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is this type of need. If you don't have it in your heart, then you're poor hearted. Then your heart has poverty in it. And that's the dangerous part of all of this. And when you don't have that, when the heart is, you know, there are two types of deficiencies for, by which this type of state comes. You know, this, this state that the heart does not have iman in it, does not have tawakkul, does not have taqwa, does not have, uh, you know, uh, hope in Allah and, and does not have the fear of Allah, does not, all of this comes, why? Because of two reasons. Number one, the person does not know Allah, does not know anything about Allah. You know, like all the names we talked about, all the attributes of Allah we talked about, the person does not know those things. Secondly, the person does not act upon that knowledge. Because when you don't act upon the knowledge, you don't taste the fruits of Iman. You don't taste the fruits of taqwa. You don't taste the fruits of tawakkul and so on and so forth. Knowledge and action. Those are the deficiencies that result. So because of that, when people don't have that, they begin to look elsewhere. And they begin to look at all the different ways that, you know, the people who are quacks when it comes to uh, the spiritual nourishment of the heart, they begin to recommend different things. And even in uh, Islamically speaking, you know, the people who call themselves Muslims, they will say, read this, you know, a hundred times, or read this a thousand times, or, 
or do this a thousand times or dance in this way or that way or repeat the, the kalima of Allah and you know many different exercises that people do which were never done by the Prophet وسلم, and never done by the Sahaba So people begin to look elsewhere and some people get that by you know people get that through food you know that, that, that temporary satisfaction a temporary bliss, that instant gratification. Some people get it through dessert, some people get it through food, uh, food, some people get it through sports, some people get it through drugs, some people get it through alcohol, some people get it through fame and popularity and the number of likes that they get. Some people get it by, 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 by valuing themselves more than necessary by thinking that they are so good and they get pleasure out of that. Some people get it through family and friends, through fame. People are looking for it everywhere. But they soon discover that these things don't last. That they cannot, the happiness goes away. The happiness goes away. And they're looking for love, for example, with human beings. What they should really be doing is looking for love with Allah, so the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when that happens, you begin to have selfishness. You begin to have a self-centeredness. When the heart is empty, when the heart, heart is impoverished, when the heart has poverty in it, you begin to taste betrayal from other human beings. That love that you're looking for, you don't get anything in return from other human beings. And you begin to feel betrayed. And you begin to have envy and jealousy and all the other diseases of the heart. And we, we're looking for perfection in the wrong places. Oftentimes when we uh, have relationships with human beings, we're, uh, implicitly we're looking for perfection. We, we have a lot of very high expectations from, from people. And if they let us down in any way, then we're just so totally down, we don't want anything to do with this human being or other human beings and so on. And hence you have the attitude that when somebody is bitten with divorce, the brothers, the men, they begin to distrust all women. And the women, they begin to distrust all men. Because they're looking for happiness and joy and love in the wrong place. They're looking for it in a human being. They're looking for perfection in a human being. They're looking in the wrong place because their own hearts are poor. They're impoverished. Brothers, you know when, physically speaking, physically speaking, externally, our bodies, when you're poor, you know, poor, you know, by the material sense, that means that you have some inferior possessions. You don't have money, you know, like the rich people, you don't have your, your uh, residence is not like the rich people, your homes are not like the rich people, your car is not like the rich cars, the rich people's cars and so on. So your possessions are inferior when you're physically poor, right? And often when you're physically poor, your basic needs are not met, right? Physically, right? Your basic needs are not met. And the future doesn't look very bright either, because in the future you're you have the you you're, you're worried that you know where are you going to get this? How are you going to meet this bill or that bill? And and you know and by, when you're poor on the outside, this is the, the, some of the uh, trials that you go through. And then you begin to search for material solutions that, okay, if I get a second job or a third job, or if I do this business or that business, right? These are all practical things that we do. And certainly we don't have enough money or enough wealth to share with other people, to help other people along. We don't have that. Well, the same, five, these five things that I mentioned are applicable to when you're poor internally. I just mentioned the external poverty. When you're impoverished, when you have poverty internally, the same things apply. First, when it comes to inferior possessions, your heart 
has inferior possessions in the sense that it doesn't have iman. That's the richness. The inferior, inferiority is when you don't have iman. When you have selfishness. When you have self-centeredness. When you don't have tawheed. Tawheed is in the richness. But the poorness is when you only think of yourself. When you envy others. When you have jealousy. When you hate. When you, when, uh, when, when you think bad of other people. When you suspect other people. These are the inferior possessions. The cesspool of inferior possessions in our hearts. And because of this type of cesspool that's in our hearts, often our needs go unmet. The need for contentment, you know, the need to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the need to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it all, it all goes unmet. We, we don't think about it much because we're so, just so busy in ourselves rather than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we're so busy in, in making sure that we look a certain way in front of people that we earn a certain amount that we have a certain status and so Allah, the real needs of the heart of knowing Allah, loving Allah, trusting Allah having time for Allah to reflect on Allah's creation all of that goes unmet and the expectations for the future are even more bleak because when we don't have this, you're only attached to the dunya. You're attached to the outside, the external. And the heart constantly is thinking and is thinking of, okay, how am I going to uh, appear here? How am I going to appear there? What, how, how can I acquire this? How can I, uh, how can I acquire that? And it, you become more and more anxious. You become fearful of the future. So the expectations also become unrealistic. And then you begin to search, you scour the earth for, 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 uh, for ways to make yourself happy. Whatever it may be. As I mentioned earlier, it could be food, it could be other human beings, it could be a party, it could be pornography, it could be uh, rank, uh, uh, like status and popularity and fame and uh, money, it could be clothes, it could be anything. You begin to search for happiness in those particular things. And certainly, you can't help others. If you can't help yourself, how are you going to help other people? It's a muscle. So, the internal, the, when you talk about the poorness, this is the person who's internally poor. Just like there's external poverty. Similarly, when you come to the richness, the internal richness versus the external richness. The ex internal richness, brothers, comes from the issue of realizing what's impermanent and what's permanent. You see, often we attach ourselves to the worldly things, and those things they don't last. You know, you have a relationship with certain... Even, let, let, let's say you have a beautiful relationship with your spouse, with your wife, with your husband. Okay, that's going to last for some time. But after that, it's going to be over. Because, Every soul shall taste death. And, like the Rasul Wasallam said that, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates people by virtue of this book and then puts others down depending on their practice or lack thereof. So, nothing is permanent in this life. We're all moving on. Things, you know, you have, today you have this, tomorrow you don't. That applies to everything. You know, today people glorify you, tomorrow they'll vilify you. Today people love you, tomorrow they'll hate you. Nothing is permanent. Nothing is permanent. The hearts are temperamental. This is one of the characteristics of the heart. So what happens is that the heart is not rich. When the heart does not realize this. So that permanence that we are often looking for implicitly, like we're looking for permanent relationships. When we go to a certain institution, we, we expect that everything is going to be top of the line. And if we don't get that top of the line uh, response, 
then we're turned off. We don't want to go to that institution. We don't want to go to that place again. Because those are the false expectations that we have. That permanence that we seek, that perfect love that we seek, that perfect trust that we seek, can only come from Allah. Can only come from Allah. It doesn't come from money, it doesn't come from wealth. That can only come from Allah. And that's why you have Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he says that, you know, in Allah Ta'ala, يُعْطِي mal مَنْ أَحَبَّ وَمَنْ لَا يحب. Surely Allah, the most exalted, the most high, gives money to the people He loves and the people He doesn't love. And the people He does not love. He gives money to them also. <laughs> we can see that today, everywhere in the world, we can see that today. وَلَا يُعْطِي الْإِيمَانِ إِلَّا مَنْ يحب. But when it comes to Iman, he doesn't give it to anyone except the one he loves. He only gives Iman to the one he loves. SubhanAllah. So that's why the believer doesn't look at money as a favor from Allah. He doesn't look at money as a favor from Allah. He just looks at it as, okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him this, this money to use in his way, and that's it. It's a tool to establish the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the believer now is not phased by whether people praise him, or they censure him, they praise him, they abuse him, or the believer is not worried about what happens, you know, what happens in, in the world as far as affecting him, and, and so on. And he doesn't make decisions because of the worldly things. Because he or she is worried about the richness of the heart. And the poorness of the heart. And hence, you find that the believer, by being rich in the heart, now, being totally dependent on Allah, always thinking of Allah, having the faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is now has freed himself from the prison of this world, has risen above the hustle and bustle of this world with his heart, the rich heart. And it's not worth it. The believer sees that it's not worth it to right, you know, to, to always be arguing and, and, and debating about worldly things. Because his mind and his heart is somewhere else, is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And hence you find brothers that one time uh, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa was talking to Abu Dhar again and, and he was telling him that you know there was a man who passed by them and he said actually it's another hadith where Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa pointed out he was asking Abu Dhar that what do you think about a man who is you know, who had a, you know, the, uh, 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 this person, you know, from the people of the, uh, some of the uh, leaders. And so Abu Dhar said, yeah, yeah, that person is very well respected. And if he asks for anything, other people respond to him right away. And if he calls upon people, they respond right away and, and so on. So Rasul Sallallahu kept quiet and said, okay, how about this person? Do you know this person? And he said, no. Abu Zar said no, so Rasulullah began to describe him. He was, a people, he was one of the people from the Ashab al Sufa, you know, the people who used to stay in the masjid, in the masjid of the Prophet. So he, he began to describe them. And so, uh, so uh, Abu Zar said, Oh, yeah, 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 I know that person. But that person is so poor, that person is, is uh, you know, if anybody was to uh, look at him, they would not pay any attention to him, and they wouldn't pay any mind to him, he would never be listened to, and so on. So Rasulullah said, that person, this person, this poor person, and poor on the outside, is much better than an earth full of that first person. Because the first person was poor on the outside, or was rich on the outside, poor on the inside. The second person was poor on the outside, but rich on the inside. There's a big difference. So Abu Dhar said that, don't you think, Ya Rasulullah, that this person should be given, you know, this poor person should be given like what the rich person has given? 
So Rasulullah Wasallam he said, if he is given that richness, then he deserves it. And if he does not get it, then he gets then he gets the blessing of reward for a good deed. He gets the reward of a good deed. But the Prophet was saying, if he gets the the uh, uh, the riches of the world, then he will use it in the right way. But if he doesn't, then he will get a good deed. Why will he get a good deed? Because he's patient, and whatever little he has, he he shares it with other people, and he is he's happy that he doesn't have something that distracts him from the love of Allah and that distracts him from the trust in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and so on. So that's hence he gets a good deed, and hence you find a Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying. In a hadith, subhanallah, he says, Yaqul Rabbukum, your Lord, your Rabb is talking to you. Your, your Rabb is saying to you, Ya ibn Adam, tafarraq bi ibadati. O child of Adam, human being, devote yourself to my worship. Hmm? Devote yourself to my worship. Right? Worship is everything, right? Making the salah, making dua, learning about Islam, teaching people, establishing a community, teaching, earning, donating in the way of Allah, struggling for the cause of Allah. All of this is worship. So he says, Ya ibn Adam, tafarraq li ibadati. O child of Adam, Devote yourself to my worship. You do that? Devote yourself to my worship? I'll fill I shall fill your heart with richness, with riches. I'll fill your heart with riches. And I will fill your hands with provisions. All the stuff that you need, I'll fill your hands with. Just devote yourself to my worship, to my cause, to my mission. Yabna Adam, the other side. Yabna Adam, O child of Adam. Falatu la'id minni. Don't distance yourself from me. Do not distance yourself from me. Or else, amla qalbaka faqran, wa amla yadayka shuklan. Or else, I will fill your heart with poorness, with poverty, poverty that we talked about, and I'll fill your hands with busy work. SubhanAllah, if we can just practice this hadith, we would be the leaders of the world. Just practice this one hadith, we would be the leaders of the world. And this totally displays the richness and the poorness of the heart. If we, as Muslims, as the Prophet wasallam said, Your Lord, your Rabb is talking to you, your Rabb is talking to you and saying to you, O child of Adam, devote yourself to my worship and I will fill your heart with richness. I'll give you the Iman, I'll give you the Taqwa, I'll give you the, the Tawakkul, I'll, I'll give you all the confidence you need to practice Islam, I'll give you that love of Allah, I'll bless you with that rizq. I will put that happiness and that joy, that satisfaction in your heart. You don't have to look for it anywhere else. And I'll give you all the physical things that you need. I'll, I'll, I'll fill your hands with it. You don't have to worry about where, who's going to pay this bill or that bill. It'll be done. I'll take care of it for you. I'll make it such that you don't have to worry about those things. But wait a minute. My child of Adam, you have not Adam. Don't distance yourself from me. Do not distance yourself from me. Otherwise, I'll fill your heart with poverty. You'll always be unhappy. You'll always be depressed. You'll always 
You're going to be looking for happiness in the worldly things. You're going to attach yourself to worldly things. You're going to look for permanence in worldly things. You're going to look for love in the wrong places. You're going to look for trust in the wrong places. And I'll fill your hands with busy work. You'll be so busy, you won't have time to think about Allah. You won't have time to reflect about Allah. You won't have time to obey Allah. I'll fill your hands with busy work. SubhanAllah. When we attach ourselves to the dunya, that's the poverty of the heart. And that's why Isa alayhi salam, Prophet Isa, Jesus, it is reported that he said, the one who attaches himself to the world, the world, you know, talib of dunya, he said, the one who seeks the dunya, mithlu shari ma il bahar, that person is like the person who drinks seawater. That person, the one who's seeking the dunya, is like a person who drinks seawater. How? Kullam azdada shurban izdada atsham hatta yaqtula. The more he drinks, the more he becomes thirsty until it kills him. The seawater. That's how the person is who is attaching himself or herself to the dunya. Brothers, inshallah, I'll finish with that. And uh, as you know, we have another uh, verse today at 11 on sincerity. Everybody's welcome to come bring your families, inshallah. We'll have it here. That's why you see the table set up. So, inshallah, I'll finish with that for today. And today's topic, as you know, was rich hearts, poor hearts. And the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that we discussed today is the Prophet who was talking to Abu Dhar and he said, Ya Abu Dhar, Atara anna kathrat al mali huwa al ghina? O Abu Dhar, do you see, do you suppose that affluence is in having a lot of money, a lot of wealth? Is this how what affluence really is? Innama al ghina ghina al qal, wal faqr faqr al qal. No, in fact, affluence is the richness of the heart. And poorness or poverty is the poverty of the heart. Man kana al ghina fi qalbihi fala yaburruhu ma laqiya min al dunya. Whoever's richness is in his heart, then that person, that person will not be affected, will not be harmed by anything that the dunya throws at him or her. وَمَنْ كَانَ الْفَقْرُ فِي قَلْبِهِ And whoever's poverty is in his heart, whoever is poor-hearted, فَلَا يُغْنِيهِ مَا أُكْثِرَ لَهُ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا Then whatever, however much that person amasses, gets from the dunya, all the stuff that they get from the dunya, it will never satisfy him. It will never make him rich. وَإِنَّمَا يَضُرُّ نَفْسَهُ شُحُّهَا But in fact, what really hurts the soul is its greed. Greed for the worldly thing. I've got to have this, I've got to have that, I've got to do this, and so on. So inshallah, this is the hadith that we studied today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand and implement and enrich our lives with these directives from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on how to nurture our hearts, how to discipline our hearts and, and through, and how to purify our hearts to draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because certainly he says, إن الله يحب التوابين ويحب المتطهرين. Allah loves those people who repent, meaning cleaning on the inside, and those who love متطهرين who love to be clean in general, outside and inside. سبحان الله وبحمده أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.